In this tutorial, we're going to go over jQuery's each function, which is actually just a generic iterator function that we could use to iterate over an array. Now, to be clear, jQuery has uh, uh, two similar uh, function, each functions. The one that we're going to be discussing is the one that you could find the information for at api.jquery.com forward slash jQuery.each. Uh, this particular function will allow us to iterate over an array. Uh, let's not be confused with the other jQuery each function which uh, acts in much the same way but it actually it requires us to uh, select something in the in, in the dome but for just to be clear that one is located here at api.jquery.com forward slash each and it's it's not the one we're referring to so let's uh, actually get into uh, a problem that jQuery each solves now jQuery each will iterate over a value. Now, iteration means, if you look up the dictionary term for it, it basically means the repetition of a process or utterance. And really, that's exactly what we're, we're going to do. We want to repeat a certain process that we're going to put inside of the each function over uh, an array is essentially what we're, what we're going to do. And now let's see what we have here. What we have is an indexed array. And we see that I have five different values inside of this indexed array. Now, each one of these values is also associated with an index. And the index is its position in that array. So value 1 has a position of 0, value 2 of 1, and so on. And the problem that we have here is here we have this array, and we want to do something over this array over and over. Well, we could, I mean, let's just say that if we want to do a process like document write over each one of these things, I mean, if we did just count me uh, in there, it would actually write all of these values in one line with commas to our document. It, probably not what you want. Um, furthermore, if you wanted to target one of these individually, you would, you know, use a bracket, and if I wanted value three, I'd go two. Now, um, that's great, and then from there, you know, you could do any kind of manipulation you wanted to it, but it, that kind of assumes that you know that there's a static value, rather, in that array, and that the array isn't changing, and it could also lead to some redundant code. So, basically, we want a function that would allow us to define this process that we're going to repeat over each one of these things, but we're going to do it just once in a nice short way. So, um, you know what, let's actually just jump right into an example and, and see this each function in action. Now, as you see here, I just have plain old JavaScript, which is more than good enough to declare a, a value. But now that I'm going to use this each function, I need to include jQuery. So I've gone ahead and downloaded the latest version of jQuery, and I put it in the same location as the file that I'm working on, which is, uh, in this case, right on my desktop. So going back to my page over here, uh, I'm going to add jQuery to my page, or actually just attach it to the page via the script tag. And uh, once I close it, the next thing I want to do inside of my actual script element over here is um, use the document ready function, which this function basically says that once everything's loaded on the page, then start executing the jQuery code. And it's pretty standard. This code never changes and it's worth ingraining into your head and basically I'm referring to this document ready now inside of this document ready I'm gonna set up actually declaring my variable again and I have already done it once so let me just pop it right in there and now I'm gonna set up set the stage for the each function so like all jQuery um, functions you start off with a dollar sign period and then each now let's look at what this short code or this code hinting is telling us. Each is looking for a collection and then it's going to 
do a callback function. Uh, it's going to do a callback, and in, in this case, it's going to be a function because I'm going to put document right over there. So the collection it's looking for is what what is it going to work with? What kind of library of stuff is it going to work with? And in our case, it's going to be count me, our array. So I'll just go each and then count me. Now from there, it's saying the callback. The callback, I wanted to execute a function. Now, index and value are variables that I am going to define, but they're actually going to be coming from my array. So uh, just for the sake of being clear, you probably wouldn't write this in your own code. I'm just going to do count me index, comma, and then I'll do count me value. And then I'm going to close it. And now we're actually going to set it up just like we did with jQuery with the opening brace and go down and close it. Okay. So now we basically have set up our page to go over this array and execute something, a process inside of it. We haven't defined what that process is going to be yet. So um, all I wanted to do is go document dot write and we'll say, um, now here's the deal. What are we going to write to this document? We don't want to write count me because that's the entire array and it's going to actually spit out that entire array five different times. We want it to actually spit out maybe the value or the index. For this sake, let's just do uh, index and then plus count me value. And now this should spit out each one individually. So it should be zero value one, one value two, and so on and so forth. So let's see if this works. And in fact, it does. So it's iterated through each one of these values pretty nicely. And of course, since we could add HTML in here, if you wanted to have each one have a line break on it, we could just add forward slash and then BR. And let's see how that changes things. And then at least that way, it gets to spit it out on each new line. 